For the top hat, I once again went to the Lost Wax website and downloaded templates. I decided to buy the bundle because I thought it was a great value. Then it's simply print and cut. I've got my four different knives here to try. So I have a large X-Acto, a small X-Acto, and then a large and a small utility knife also. I've been using the small utility knife the most. I like to sharpen it on this little diamond sharpener. The material that I used to make this top hat was primarily EVA foam, and the thickness that I bought was 8mm and 6mm. I'll put a link in the description below, and if you could click on that, it really helps me out. Thanks. So here's all the parts that I cut out. This process really couldn't be any easier. So on this top hat, I tried to do something less toxic and I used the hot glue, but now I've learned my lesson and, and contact cement really worked much better, which I used later on. The hot glue, it, it was difficult to work with and I think that I would have ended up with a better result had I used the contact cement instead. Definitely not perfect, but I was pretty happy with it, especially because I knew I was going to be covering it up with uh, leather to make it look a little bit fancier. I still wanted everything to be nice and smooth though, so that's why I did a little bit of sanding. Now I start adding detail to the hat. First thing is to cut in that fan that I made on the 3D printer.
Next I add the decorative grill. Off camera, I heated it up to conform it to the proper curve. Then to get the look I was going for, I took a bunch of leather scraps and glued them all over the surface of the hat. I think it looked pretty cool. For this hat I used the same process. I had templates that I downloaded from the Lost Wax website. And then I cut out the templates and put them on the EVA foam and then glued everything together. This time I glued everything together with the contacts in my throw, which I did off camera. It turned out much better than the hot glue. It is a little bit more toxic, but I used a lot of fresh air and ventilation and okay, even a, a, resp a painting respirator. Here's a little trick to get the leather texture into the EVA foam. You can use a crinkled up aluminum foil ball and then you can use a little bit of heat and then you just press into the EVA and it makes a really nice leather texture. To paint the color of leather, I used these five acrylic paints. I used black, burnt umber, burnt sienna, raw sienna, and warm white. I started by applying a coat of black to the entire hat as a base coat. Next I started with a light solid coat of brown and then I started to add layers of the different browns to get some variation. I used different techniques such as dry brushing and then I also used a light dab of paint on my fingers to get some of the high spots and then move on to highlights. Key is to get some variation in color to get an authentic look.
At this point, I stopped and I put a coat of clear over top of everything. After the clear coat was dried, I applied black paint, and then before it dried, I wiped it off. Using this technique really makes the indentations and character of the faux leather stand out. The last technique I used to get the leather look was to add some highlights. I used the light colors and whites and I applied really lightly so it only hit the highest areas of the texture, making it really pop. To decorate the hat, I used some actual brass gears that I got from an old clock. It wasn't pretty, but I tacked everything together with solder. Then I attached the brass assembly to the hat with zip ties. For a nice accent and pop of color, I used these feathers that I got from Hobby Lobby. Once again, zip tie worked good to secure these.